morning guys it is friday february 11th and i am going to attempt today to do a day in the life now i'm not telling you that it's going to be perfect but i am going to give it a fair shot i've heard from a lot of people who said that they just want to know what i do in my regular life and so this is what i'm going to do today i wanted to let you know that one of the first things that i do when i come down to my office in the morning is i do what i just did and i make a list of kind of like a brain dump all of the things that i want to do today all of the things that i need to get accomplished today i put it on a list i keep a pen and the list handy with me because let's just be honest we get distracted when we do our quiet time in the morning but I do try to keep that handy with me so as things pop in my head I can write it down that way I can write it down I can forget about it I don't have to do anything with it but I have it for later. I wanted to also share with you some of the apps that I have on my laptop in the morning. Now, I generally have four apps open or four bookmarks open on my laptop when I come down in the morning. Now, that changes throughout my quiet time morning, but I always keep four um, open at all times. Facebook is one of them, and the reason being is because I post on our kitchen table page. If you're not already, I will have the link down below for you to be a part of that page. It is a Facebook page that I manage, that I share devotionals every day. I share different kinds of resources, things like that that you don't want to miss. We have about, I think, close to 550 people who are part of that page, so I do keep that open because there are things that I share. I do share devotionals every morning at 7.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. I also keep on uh, YouTube because I listen to noise in the background. Now, I say noise and not music because I feel like music is distracting sometimes. Unless it's piano music, it's instrumental music of some sort, which I do often. But I've been in the habit, friends, of listening to, take a look at this, listening to winter storm uh, noises. Isn't this weird? Is this weird? I don't know if this is weird or not, but I listen to winter storm ambiance. And this one says, with icy howling wind sounds for sleeping, relaxing, and stunning background. And what I um, searched for just um, to get this is winter noise or winter sound or snowstorms uh, for studying. So that is what I have been into lately, but I keep this one open. And then what I will do is I will put my AirPods in and listen to it as I am studying. I feel like it really, really helps. Another app that I keep open uh, generally at all times, there's two more, there is BibleHub.com. Now, this is a great resource for you to get all of your quiet time study notes from. They have great commentary. They have sermons that you can actually read and then print off. They have things like topicals that you can look up on certain topics that you want to study in Scripture. They have a Strong's Concordance. They have all of the information that you need to know about the Greek and the Hebrew words. They have several different translations that you can look look up. I absolutely recommend this and it is my go-to app. The next one that I am constantly going to is dictionary.com. Now that might seem funny to you, but I look up words and their definitions all day long. I think it's very important when I am studying scripture to know what I am studying, to know what that word means, to know what the root word means, and then what synonyms are available for that word. A lot of times, I have to be honest with you, I have had a wonderful uh, study time with the Lord because I better understand the words that are being communicated either in scripture or in commentaries that I read. So let's just dive into a regular quiet time, study time with me. Uh, this morning it is 548. I did get up a little later today. I was extremely tired last night when I went to bed. As many of you know, my daughter, my son-in-law, and my newborn uh, grandson live with us, and he has been having some stomach issues and just a bunch of things going on, not serious or anything like that, but we have been, uh, I've been up with him early in the mornings to kind of help her out while my son-in-law goes to work, but today they are taking him to a doctor appointment, and so I am down here in my quiet time while they are sleeping. So we're a little tired, we're a little weary this morning. I generally get up anywhere 
between 4.30 and 5.30. Um, that's generally my window of time that I get up. This morning I woke up about 5.15 but didn't get out of bed until 5.30. So made my coffee. I'm sitting down to read my Bible and let's just go in. I wanted to pop on here really quick and I wanted to give you a suggestion. Now I hear a lot of people who will say, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to read. How do you ever know what you're going to study in any given day? Listen, friends, I leave myself with an arsenal of things to study. And what that means is anytime that I come across um, maybe a sermon that I have really liked, or maybe it's a book that I have really liked, or maybe it is just conversations that I've had with people, or maybe it's a verse that I was studying that led me to different verses in the Bible, I make note of that. And so what I do oftentimes is I will write down a list like this, just keep a little teeny list like this of verses that I want to study. And as I study them, I just cross them off. It's nothing fancy. So what I will do oftentimes is I will make a list so that I always have something that I want to investigate further. I want to study down further. Also, when I see things, maybe it's a blogs or maybe it's um, articles, you know, in some kind of Christian online magazine or whatever, I will write those down or I will print those off so that I can go back to them and have something to study. This right here is a folder. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a folder that says stuff I'm working on or in progress. And so these are all kinds of commentaries that I want to study. They're just, again, just Psalms that I've printed out on BibleGateway.com. And so I keep them in here and that way I have them. You know, we can't study everything at once and there's so many things that we want to investigate, so many things that we want to take a look at, read, study. And so I don't want to forget those. And so I put those in this in progress folder. So that's what I do there. Another thing that I wanted to um, make reference to is that a lot of times I will go through a book and it takes me a long time because I'm doing the book in conjunction with my quiet time. But I'm not kidding. If there is a book that you have been looking for to study, uh, to help you with scripture, to help you to better understand what is being communicated in scripture, this is the one for you. It is called Studies in the Sermon on the Mount, and it's by a man named Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. And it is a thick book. Look at how big this thing is. And it was not spiral bound when I got it. It was just um, it was just a soft cover, and I had I'd taken it to Staples. I had them cut it and put this three ring binder on it, which only costs like four to six dollars. I don't remember, it was several months ago now. But what he is doing in this book is he's taking us through the Sermon on the Mount in, found in Matthew 5, and it's going through every single part of that sermon, which happens to be Jesus's most famous sermon that he ever preached in the Bible. And so as you can see, I started this probably back in maybe September or October, and I am just only this far in. It's because I am taking it and I am pulling apart what it's saying. I am writing down sticky notes, highlighting, taking notes, and then whenever I come to an area that I want to pause and then study for myself, I do that. So that is another helpful thing that when you're looking for something to study, you know, you can always do that in conjunction with what you're already doing. Another side note that I wanted to um, tell you is study your word for the year. Now, I don't know if you have chosen a word to live by for the year. I have, and that is the word strive. Probably for the last 10, 12 years, I have chose a word to live by throughout the year. And I am going to be honest with you. Many years I have let the entire 12 months pass and not done anything actively with my word, but this year I decided to change that up. I decided to find all that I could about that one word and study it periodically in different points in time throughout my year. And so what I have is a strive uh, kind of bundle of information about the word strive, different Bible references on that word strive. And what I do is I just keep this with me. So if I'm ever in a slump or in a period of time where I'm like, I just don't know what to study, I return back here to this word strive, and then I can actively engage with that word and then learn more about that word. And then I just keep it here with me at my study desk so that I have it. And then it's another thing that you you can do if you are struggling to know what exactly to study. 
a completely different side note for those who are in ministry um, at all. Those who, who are ministry leaders, who are small group leaders, who are Bible study teachers, Sunday school um, teachers. This is something for you. I wanted to make mention that, you know, I do three videos every single week. I do a video on Tuesday, a video on Thursday, and then a Bible study every Sunday. And I feel like I am constantly doing work for my ministry. But what I want to say first and foremost is I get my quiet time in with the Lord first. It is me filling up myself first so that I can be the best version of myself possible so that I can feed into other people. You know, we cannot give from an empty bucket. And so I wake up early so that I can study the word of God for myself. I never come down to this quiet time to spend time with Jesus and just right away begin doing things for my ministry. I make sure that I am getting filled up first. I'm always saying that I try to do a lot more contributing than consuming, but the opposite is true for my walk with Jesus. I do a lot more consuming for me so that I can fill my bucket up and be able to share in that overflow with other people. So great side note for ministry leaders. So I get asked a lot of times um, how I keep notes in my Bible. I just was asked recently about the sticky notes that I put and um, I was asked about whether or not they cover the text in my Bible and how I get those from helping so that they don't um, you know, take off the text. A lot of times what I will do, and this is a great example of, um, I'm, I'm currently in the process of studying 2 Corinthians 4.6. Um, but this is a great note on 2 Corinthians 4 8. It was something that I wanted to make sure to keep. Now, what I would generally try to do is keep this with all of the other uh, bundles that I study. So for instance, let me just show you, these are all kinds of bundles. I call them bundles that I'm studying. So this right here was Joshua 23.8. These are a bunch of commentaries that I took notes on. You can see I just basically keep them together here with, um, you know, a fancy little paper clip. I say fancy. These are just uh, paper clips that I used using Dollar Tree paper clips and then some washi tape. But what I do is I keep these bundles and then what happens after I have studied um, a bundle like this. So this again is Joshua 23, 8. It's one verse. Now I may have different verses in there that um, go along with Joshua 23, 8, but that is the primary verse that I was studying. What I will then do is those go into these three ring binders here. So I have four three ring binders and I am getting ready to have to probably get another one because as you can see, these are getting really full. I have two Old Testament ones, and then I have two New Testament ones there in the back. And so what I will do is I will add those to those three ring binders. And then that way, I have something to refer back to, to study later, or to look at, or to make reference to for something else that I'm reading. And it's just a really great way for me to keep organized what it is that I am studying. And you can see I have tons and tons and tons of um, bundles. And look who has joined us, Miss Isabel. Hello, sweet girl. Hello. Hi, this is my Isabel. She's my Shorky. She comes down here in the mornings. Generally, she won't come down with me first thing in the morning, but um, she will sleep in with her daddy. Look at, she's going to her little spot there in the corner. Hello, sweet girl. She's just She's just a sweet girl. We were talking about she's getting old um, the other day, and so she is aging. She's about almost 14 years old, so she's our sweetie. But back to what we were talking about. So I have here a whole bunch of bundles, as you can see, um, different uh, verses that I have studied, and they are all um, you know, kept with paper clips. So when I do that, um, I oftentimes will attach notes like this that I wanna keep with the bundles. But 
Um, what I want to say though is there are some days where the information on a little note like this is so important that I actually want to keep it in my Bible. So I will take these little notes like this and I get these Listen, I get these, I'm not a fancy gal. I get these at the Dollar Tree. They are just little uh, note, I don't know, note, notepads, I guess, in different colors. I have a whole bunch of them that I bought. I think they come like, they come one color, they come in like a one color pack of maybe five or six for a buck. I mean, I just get these because they are great to take notes on and then, um, you know, like I said, adhere them to my bundles um, where I want something to stick out. Um, let me see if I've got one in here. You know, of course I'm picking one that I don't have one here, but these are all of the commentary notes that I want to keep. And this might have been something important to keep with it, but it was so good that I wanted to keep it in my Bible. What I do is I literally just paper clip, or I literally just staple it right to the top of my Bible. Um, this was 2 Corinthians 4, 8. We are troubled yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. And so I wanted to keep note and keep reference of what does the word troubled mean? What does the word distressed mean? And then, you know, different things. Um, and so I do that throughout my Bible. You will see here. Um, wow, look at all of those notes that I have on the top of my Bible. So this is just a way for me to have uh, different references in my Bible. I Look at this cute one, um, if I can find it again. This is one that I started using a while back. Um, see, just different notes that I have that I want to keep track of things within Scripture. But this was one, uh, this was a guest check, uh, just something that I often would use in my journaling supplies or in my um, scrapbooking supplies. I have these cute little guest checks. I bought these on Amazon, really inexpensive. They come a whole entire pack for maybe five or six dollars and I use them to put at the beginning of my gospels and then I just have when things in life get complicated uh, and difficult return to the life of Jesus. And then here's the questions that we are to ask ourselves um, when we study this, the, the Gospels. How did Jesus live? Um, what he said, what he taught, and what he practiced. And so even that, I just adhere right to my Bible. This one I just used an old-fashioned paper clip, but with a little cute piece of washi tape at the top. So this is just a way for me to keep. Here's another one that I actually adhered a little uh, tab to the top. Um, so, so yeah, just a way for me to keep um, at close hand references that I want to make note about the, the stuff that I am studying. Um, the other thing about the sticky notes is I will often put them down below in the study text so they're not actually covering the words of my Bible, if that makes sense. But they're covering actually the lower parts of the commentary at the bottom. So yeah, that's just a side note, something I wanted to share with you that I do.
I wanted to show you really quick something in Bible Hub. Now, if you're not familiar with Bible Hub, I talked about it a minute ago. It is a great resource to have. It is very, very easy to use. I think that's why I like it. It is very easy. It's not complicated. There's not many layers, although there are, they're very simple to get to. So I want to just give you this example. First Peter 4.18 is a verse that I just looked up this morning. What you will do, uh, first and foremost, when you come to Bible Hub is you'll have this reference box or keyword box here and this is where you type in the verse that you want to look up so I typed in first Peter 418 one of the things that is the drawback I guess for Bible Hub is you can't do a whole bunch of verses at one time you can only speak uh, pick specific one verses at a time but that's that's fine I want to do that because I often um, times will study one verse at a time so here's first Peter 418 the first thing that you will see is all of these different translations. So right away you have the new new uh, international version, you have the NLT, the ESV, the Berean, the King James. Um, as you will see, this is not in uh, alphabetical order. It's kind of by what is the most popular translations out there. The NIV and the NLT are two of the most um, prominent uh, translations that are available. So those are the ones that are right up front. So you can scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Down, and then you, when you get to the bottom, it'll say additional translations. If you click on here, you will get additional uh, translations that you can look up that you might not have found here. They're not going to be more common ones. They're going to be less common ones, but they are available. Then when you scroll down here, you will see that there begins to be commentary. Now, right away, you just will see a couple different commentaries, but then you've got this link here that says parallel commentaries. Make note of that. We're going to come back to that in a minute. The next thing that you are going to see is you are you're going to see the Greek or it would be in the Old Testament, the Hebrew words. And so um, they will outline what those words are in the Greek and Hebrew, what they mean, and then a link to where you can actually find it in the Strong's Concordance, which is super, super nice. But let's go back to that commentary because this is a place that I use all the time. I want to go on parallel commentaries. You can also find them if you scroll all the way back at the top, you will find parallel as well here, which is the same thing. You can go to actually commentaries, which is the exact same thing. Click on commentaries and you're going to get all of the different commentaries available for this particular verse. And I love this so, so much. So I just go through and I, um, I can see all of the different commentators, um, and what they have to say about the verse. Very important. This, friends, is where I get a lot of references to other verses to study. So if I come across a commentary that I really resonate with, that I really like, then I will go ahead and just cut and paste this into a Word document so that I can print it. And then um, I do that a lot with Matthew Henry. I absolutely love him. I do this with the Barnes Notes of the Bible a lot. Um, and then another one that I like in the basic commentaries, let's see, is Gill's, Gill's Exposition of the Entire Bible. So that's the next thing that I will do is if I really like those, I'm able to like print those out or sections of those. I don't have to print the whole thing if I don't want to. I can write it down in a journal. If you don't have a printer, you can write down different references so that you can study those yourself. Um, you can even write down certain things that you really like that a commentary said. You don't have to have a printer, so to speak, to get those um, to get those in there. I didn't print them for a long time. I simply wrote those down in my journal. Um, so the next thing that I often like to do is I like to go to this sermons tab that's found right here. I go to sermons and then I can find all of the different topical sermons that have been done. And I love this. These are all of the topical sermons that have been done just on 1 Peter 4.18. Um, so look at all of the different sermons that you can look at and study and um, refer back to and print off. Off. So what I like to do is I like to find out what sermons relate specifically to that one verse. And as you can see, a lot of these are referencing several different verses within a field of verses. And then I like to go through and find a commentator that I really like. So Charles Spurgeon is one of my favorite. I love to hear what he has to say. So a lot of times I will jump right 
to those. Um, I absolutely love him. Let's see if there's another one that I really like here on this list. Um, Jay Alexander is another one that I absolutely love, so I like to see what he has to say. Um, the sermons done by homilist are generally very good. Um, and so I just like to find what ones that I like and then print those. And that is what makes up these bundles. I don't know if you can see this or not, but these are what make up these little bundles that I find because then I can study uh, what it is that I'm learning through the commentators. I can make little references and notes myself here. And then I have a really nice little bundle of things that I've studied. Now, don't think that this is something that you have to do. This is just what I do. Don't think that this is something that you have to do daily. Um, you can print these off and then take two or three weeks to study this bundle. Um, listen, it's really about how the Lord is speaking to you, what you are learning from it, what you are getting out of your quiet time. This is not a race to the finish line. This isn't about how much you can do. This is just something that will be helpful for you. So Bible Hub, it is a great, great, great resource. Make sure that if you haven't already, hop on Bible Hub and get it, give it a try. Okay, I am stopping in my quiet time to show you something here. I um, am reading, uh, I had been led to something else tonight, today, um, talking about gentleness and Galatians 5, 23. Um, it says this in that verse, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, and gentleness. And this is a focus on the word gentleness. Um, and I found this in a commentator, a commentary, um, the word gentleness. And so I'm kind of going through and what does this word gentleness mean? But I want to show you an example of how I use dictionary.com and why it's so important. So this particular line in the commentary says, gentleness will not hide from pain. It endures its own and absorbs that which others cannot stand. So you can see I wrote a note down beside it. If you can see that, it says, wow, gentleness absorbs which others cannot stand. Gentleness will not hide from pain. It endures its own and absorbs that which others cannot stand. So I wanted to show you here um, really quick this word absorbs. So all I did is I typed in the word absorb into my search engine in dictionary.com. Here is what it says about it. To suck up or drink in, to soak in, to swallow up the identity or individuality or to incorporate, to occupy or fill. But I want to um, show you what it says here. It says to take in without echo, recoil, or reflection. To take in without echo, recoil, or reflection. So let's take a look back at this commentary. Gentleness will not hide from pain. It endures its own and absorbs that which others cannot stand. It takes in without echo. It, it, it takes in without recoiling or reflection or reflecting. Think about that. Gentleness absorbs what others cannot stand. So in other words, it absorbs. It takes in without echo, without recoil, or without reflection. In other words, it takes all of the things that the world would give, right? All of the hate and all of the ugly, and it takes that in. And instead of reflecting that back to other people, instead of demanding your right to other people, instead of um, uh, reflecting that negativity back on other people, it takes it in without echo, it takes it in without recoil, without recoiling, and it takes it in without reflection. I love this. And so we learn more when we study the words, which we think we already know. Like I know what the word absorb means, but when we look at it in dictionary.com and we look at the various different meanings, we can choose which one is most appropriate to what it is that is being communicated here. And this is the way I feel like often God will speak to my heart.
Why be moody when you can shake your booty? Guppy. Looky, it's Guppy. <laughs> oh my gosh, you look bigger than you did yesterday. Hi. Do you say hi? Poor little boy is going to go to the doctors today to find out what's wrong with him's belly. I love you. I mean this face. Look at that face. How could you not? Say hello, people. Hello. Look at that look on your face. He's still hungry. I make him happy. I make him happy. Whoop. Yep. Whoop. That's oh, it. Oh, he loves his mama. Hi. Hello, Roman. Hello, sweet boy. Hello, sweet boy. Are you going to say hi? Are you going to look here? Hello, sweet boy. Hello, sweet boy. Yes, I see you too. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Sweepy. It's so cute. It's been a full day already and it's like 8.30. Wow. Roman. Roman. Hi, Roman. What I'm a good sweepy. boy you are. Okay, so I'm not sure <laughs> what my husband was trying to say today by piling up all of the <laughs> pillows here. We had a conversation the other day about how many pillows we have on our bed and we're going to count them later. I think it's something like, I don't know, 12 maybe. I don't know. But anyway, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six pillows stacked up like this. So, hmm. <laughs> I think he was trying to tell me something about get rid of the pillows, woman. But we're going to count them in a minute. Okay, so normally what I will do is I will have my quiet time in the morning. I don't know. It, it depends. Uh, some days are different. Um, some days it's like until 8 o'clock. Some days it's till 9.30, 10 o'clock. It just depends. This morning I have a lot of things that I want to get accomplished today. I have a list of to-dos and errands and things that I need to run. So it is a quarter to 9. And so I am just going to get in the shower and get ready for the day, maybe do something with this face and get on with the rest of my day. So let's do that. So I wanted to come on here periodically through the day in this vlog to share with you little nuggets of um, just lessons, things that I'm learning, things that God's showing me, things that I have been learning in my quiet time. And this was something that I wanted to share with you. So. This week, I had a friend who came to visit me. There was two friends actually that came to visit me to see, basically to see Roman, to see my grandson. And they wanted to, you know, come over for the day, and so they did, and at, uh, you know, we, we had a wonderful time. We spent all day together. We, you know, they saw the baby, we had lunch, we got to chat, we got to catch up, it was awesome. The next day, I got a text from one of the friends who visited saying, hey, I noticed that you had awesome um, eyelashes like I, I'm basically saying I love how you do your eyelashes and I want to know what kind of mascara you use and I was like okay I don't know that anybody's ever asked me that before but hey I'm willing to share with you so I shared with her the regimen that I use in fact I used I use these two um, by Rimmel really cheap inexpensive I get it at Walmart um, they're called scandal eyes and I was like well I mean I guess if you have to know these are the two that I use and I use them in this order the purple first and then the orange and I didn't think much of it. I went throughout the rest of my day. And this morning, as I was getting ready to put on my mascara, I thought about that. 
And I thought about, you know, most of the time I live behind glasses. I am finding that in my older age, I can't see as much as good as I used to be able to see. So I live behind glasses most of the time and never would I have imagined in that day that she was here visiting me, that she would have been looking at my eyes and thinking, wow, you have beautiful mascara. You do your eyes really good. You know, what do you use? I never would have thought about that. I was just going through my day, um, you know, wearing my glasses, not thinking a thing about my eyes or my makeup or my mascara. And she's the one who brought it to light and said, I love how they look. Will you show me how you do yours? I started to think about what that looks like in the Christian life. So many times we are completely unaware of the fact that people are watching us. People are paying attention to us as believers. They want to look at our life and pay attention to what it is that we believe, how we act, how we show grace, how we forgive others, how we love on the cashier at Meyer, and how we treat the waiter or the waitress at our restaurant, right? And we are being watched all the time. We may not see it. We may not know it. We may not feel it. We may not understand it until years later even, but people are watching. And so I started to think about about how we can become aware, how we can live aware of that, and how being aware of that or living aware of that will help to alter the way that we live. Because quite honestly, it's not just our reputation that's at stake, it's Jesus's reputation that's at stake. If we say that we follow him, if we say that he is good and he is merciful and he is loving and he is forgiving and he is all of these things, then we as his followers have to imitate that life. And so I couldn't even, I, I couldn't believe that God showed me this lesson as it relates to mascara, but I felt like that was something that I wanted to share with you today. You know, people are watching your life. They're paying attention to what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're acting as a believer. And it matters how you are loving other people, how you are showing grace to other people, how you are demonstrating Jesus in your world. So be aware of that today as you go throughout your day. Be aware that people are they are checking out your mascara when you're not looking. They are looking at your life when you are not paying attention. And so we have to be constantly aware of what we're doing and how we're acting. As I'm sitting here, I just got done doing my laundry, but I wanted to give you another one of those nuggets of information or those nuggets, those lessons uh, that I feel like God has been showing me lately. So I was talking to a friend the other day. We were talking about how this world is so about rest. You know, you deserve to rest. You deserve downtime. Um, you deserve to just, just rest. And there's nothing wrong with that right? There's, there's nothing wrong with rest. I mean, God calls us to rest. We are called in to seasons of rest, not being so busy, not being so actively engaged in doing the stuff all the time, but sometimes just rest, resting in him, resting in his word, resting in fellowship with other believers. But I think sometimes we tire ourselves out by worldly activity. 
and not so much by godly activity, not so much by things that God would have us to do. And so sometimes we say we need rest because we're so busy doing the thing in the world that we haven't put enough focus and energy and effort um, into the things of God. And so sometimes I think that what we are actually saying that we need rest from are worldly things, where we try to think that that means that God is ushering us into a season of rest, when really he's like, no, I need for you to be active in your faith now more than ever. I need you to be actively praying. I need for you to love on your neighbor. I need for you to reach out to those who are lost. I need you to be the light in the world. Those are the things that we are called to do as Christians. Sometimes I think that we are so exhausted doing the physical things of the world that sometimes I think that we get that complicated, we get that confused, if you will, with God's wanting us to do activity for Him. And so then we rest and not do anything. Then we sit out and not, and we're not actively doing anything at all because we're so busy from our worldly activity. So what kinds of things do you need to say no to this week? What kinds of things do you need to just let go of in your schedule so that you can do what God wants you to do and be all that he wants you to be. So just a thought today. Okay, friends, I am going to wrap up the vlog for today. I thought that I would go to the end of the day, but I have only made it to about 11 o'clock. It's not even noon yet, but I just want this to be not a very long video. I just wanted to show you a glimpse into my day and to invite you into my home to see how I do things on a regular basis. I still have a ton of things that I wanna get accomplished today. I still have to meal plan. I still have to pack for a trip my husband and I are going to go on next week. I filmed a video already this morning, but there's another one a little later that I want to film. I still have to prepare for the Bible study video that I'm going to have out this coming Sunday, which you don't want to miss. It's on the life of Hezekiah. So actually when this goes out, I will have already done that one. So you'll make sure to go back and watch that. I still have to go to the store today. I still have to wash my car, fuel up. I still have to prepare for dinner. I have to finish laundry. And and I have to do an application for something online and to do some bills. I just wanted, again, for you to see a glimpse into my life, what I do. I know it's not so exciting, but it's something that I wanted to make sure to incorporate in my channel. I'm gonna do more of these. If it's something that you like, I would love for you to give it a huge thumbs up down below. Comment down below. What kinds of things do you like to do on your Friday? Did you know that Friday is my favorite day of the week? I absolutely adore Fridays. I just pray that you have a wonderful weekend, friends. I pray that you are staying in the Word of God. One of the things that I love to do is always take along with me throughout my day little teeny note cards or sticky notes or something that have scripture on it, things that I can walk around with in my day, maybe take on my in my car, put in my purse, that kind of thing. Today I want to share with you that it is Psalm 17.3 that I have written down here along with a couple other psalms. Uh, at the very top of this this sticky note I have written, God, may I keep faithful watch over my words. Psalm 17.3 says, you tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I am determined not to sin in what I say. Then Psalm 39.1 says, I said to myself, I will watch what I do and not sin in what I say. I will hold my tongue when the ungodly are around me. And then in Psalm 141, verse 3, David says, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. So that is what I'm going to think on today, meditate on, and carry around with me so that I can watch over my words and be a good steward over my mouth. I pray that you are having an awesome day. If you like this video again, would you just let me know down below? Become a part of this family and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell every time that I upload new content. You won't want to miss some of the things that I have planned. Thanks again for
for being along on this journey with me today, friends. I love you and I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friends.